material. Do your research. It's that simple. Yeah, I looked at that information and I found it very interesting, uh, given the fact of how big some other broadcasters are at, at this time and point right now. But uh, I wanted to go back a little bit into the the death of Mr. Bill Cooper. We know he was shot five times at his front door, and uh, if you could maybe uh, tell our listeners a little bit of what took place that evening by the uh, Apache County Sheriff's Department, how they had posed as teenagers and had attempted to lure him out, because this kind of information information people need to be aware of that we had a, a gentleman here in America telling the truth and then this kind of fate was dealt to him by our government. Yes, and Farron, you get the uh, the benefit or whatever of this is the last time I'm going to tell this story because I'm sick of reliving it. And uh, I, don't, I don't blame you for that. So I don't blame you for that. You get to boast that, I guess. I made that decision contemplating the interview this morning with you. Not that whether I was going to be on or not, but just thinking about it. Uh, what occurred was <clears throat> after the uh, September 11th did not work out logistically and intelligence-wise for them. See, we went on the air live un nonstop for 10 hours straight when 9-11 happened. And all of that live coverage which is critical listening, ladies and gentlemen, because things that we had multiple satellite links into the studio, et cetera, that day of 9-11, that very morning, we always had it. Uh, there are tons of live audio feeds that we cut in and cut back to and do commentary on, have live people on the ground reporting to us that are not talked about nowadays. Well, see, because we were in and out and had researchers run in and out and we were on the air live, their 9-11 ambush was stopped because we were live on the air. It wouldn't have gone down very well. So they had to trap them. And what they did was um, on the evening there, the, the November 5th and 6th. Now, remember, it happened like late shy of midnight. So a lot of dates have been blurred by so-called reporters out there. And uh, we are the only source for the real facts. We're the only people with all the reports. And we've always told the story, so thank you, Farron, for letting us do that again. Uh, like Tex Mars told blatant lies in his code, codex book uh, about what occurred to Bill. Bill did not get shot running a stoplight in town. What happened was we had uh, had lunch together, and I had actually just went down to get new tires for his car. Uh, and pay for them and have them mounted. We went and got groceries and we did orders and lined out the broadcast. It was to be Quaviet, uh, which it was. And I went back to a side job I had and then was going to come back up the next day, pretty much the normal routine. At approximately <clears throat> 5.30 to 6 o'clock p.m., uh, the tactical team got together at a little reconnoiter point by the rodeo grounds, which is where they have a building. And they had it. They just decided that, oh, we got an opportune time. We're going to do it today. They had already planned this out. When they came and put me under arrest that morning, the next morning, and took me uh, to the so-called command center with helicopters, uh, federal agents all over. Uh, I saw with my own eyes the thermal imaging photographs, the satellite photographs, the FLIR photographs. They had used the UPS, which this is a national program, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, announced openly by Department of Homeland Security a long time ago that uh, UPS drivers are used frequently as spies for the government. The UPS driver, who, we, who had been coming around a lot for deliveries, would ask things like, oh, can I use your bathroom or get a drink of water? And get sketches of the house. What had promulgated this whole uh, so-called investigation, Farron, was uh, a local doctor, Dr. Scott Hamlin, who's a, a lying piece of crap, always has been. Uh, he and his family supposedly went up there for a ice cream treat and park and watch the sunset several months earlier um, on private property of course they were parked but bill ran them off from the house and the property up there now they claimed that bill sold them to their house 
and he shoved it, and this little wormy lying doctor uh, shoved his finger and pushed Bill back in the driveway, which would have never happened. Bill would have stomped on him had he pushed him. And uh, that Bill had a gun and all this stuff, right? And the wife and children ran in the house for fear of their lives, but because he parked right in their driveway, they had a full description of the gun and the vehicle and the license plate. Well, he goes down and files a local police report. And the, the investigators and the police force here in Eager and the chief, Scott Garms, couldn't find any evidence. They ran the plate that they just got to look point blank from the front window to the bumper. They claimed they had all the perfect view. It was not his plate. They gave the wrong description of his truck. He only owned one truck. He only drove one truck. It's the only thing he did drive. The car, the new tires I mentioned earlier that occurred that day, running in and out, uh, the preface, you know, that it was just a normal day to start with, uh, was a car he was getting up and running. Um, so that was so much baloney, and they knew Bill and, and how Bill was. They really didn't buy that the little doctor pushed him around and did all this either, and that there wasn't just a laid out fist fight and you're done type thing in the driveway. So it was dropped. Well, this little worm, he uh, was upset. He didn't get his way. He thinks he's special because of the family he happens to belong to. And he ran and took it to the county and state because the city wouldn't do anything. So they proceeded to do an investigation, hence all the intelligence gathering and blah, 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 you know, the photos and scans I told you about, the satellite images, using the UPS as spies. His name was Norm, by the way, the driver. May he uh, rot in hell. Um, and several other people around Bill. We found out. Now, there was another gentleman, uh, Glenn, who we call Glenn Judas Jacobs, uh, had come around forever, uh, hung out and leave. He just lived over the, off the hill from Bill. He went down and filed a report that me and Bill had killed Annie, Pooh, and Allison, the family, and buried them under the house. We had the place landmined and booby-trapped, and we had an AK-47s by the front door. See, the typical BS report that time and time again are proven to be lies. You see the, you see the uh, trend going here, the AK-47, blah, blah, blah. So all the gears and paperwork looks good to justify what they're going to do, they think. So that night, they get in there. And they have that emergency quick tactical team meeting, say we're going to do it tonight. Uh, the 5th, 6th, you know, like I say, because it was so late, people get that little time difference confused. Um, they decided to use a plain mark Chevy pickup. The tactical teams did. Uh, like anybody might drive around this, we're in the mountain country. Uh, 7,500 feet in the forest, elk, all that. Everybody owns a truck. Um, drove up and down to the end of the cul-de-sac from Bill, a dirt cul-de-sac. He lived on top of a hill. He was the only home on there. Um, and they had, in fact, two people in the cab, one laying in the floorboards. It's all in the reports. And then in the back of the truck, they had more agents laying underneath the tarp. So what they did was went down there and acted maybe like rowdy teenagers, drinking and playing stereos and whatnot. Something, you know, high school children do. And uh, Bill drove down there to run them off. Well, while he drove down there, then agents on foot ran up, were coming up the hill from the opposite end to surround them around the house. Uh, at that time, which is really ironic, is they even in their briefing to the chief, the lieutenant, and the sergeant locally here at about 1 in the morning when they finally told them that they had a dead resident and that they had done an operation in their town without notifying them ahead of time, said that Bill even told them, I'm going to go call the police. You're trespassing. So even though they're law enforcement, even though the person says he's going to go call the police and involve the law, he still treated like a criminal or a terrorist and ambushed. So he turns the truck around to head back to the home to make that phone call to involve the law. See how bizarre this is? And that's when a guy came out of the bushes and jumped on Bill's running board and tried to reach in. You know how they try to throw your 
huge shifter in the park, and Bill knocked him off just with his arm, didn't run over him or nothing. Pulled up kind of on a berm trying to get back to his home, ripped out the whole exhaust system from underneath the Chevy step side. He drove, uh, got in front of the house, got out. There's people swarming him from every direction, armed. Nobody said they're sheriffs or a tactical team or that they represent the law. And the shooting started. Now, <clears throat> Bill was running for the front door to get in. He had already indicated he was involving the law, so what kind of criminal is he? His people need to think about this. Exactly. The shooting began. Now, he, they claim he swung his right hand back and shot over his shoulder. I had to survey everything, his dead body, the puddles of blood, where people were laying. Officer Marinas was laying it in full forward and at an angle to him, and Bill supposedly shot him. Now, he didn't die or nothing, but the reason that doesn't jive is because we have a bullet hole through the car that was parked there. And the angle doesn't match him pointing over behind him while he's running, randomly shooting. We're talking about a 60 degree difference. So I guess he had one of those magic bullets. And, uh, but who Marinas did line up with was Deputy Goldsmith. Now, Deputy Goldsmith is who shot Bill multiple times. Those two were an exact line. Bill, uh, we had an official uh, forensics specialist on the air live, unrehearsed, so nothing would be pre-done. Uh, analyzed the autopsy reports, which we got from the Tucson lab of Arizona that did the autopsy. Whenever there's a shooting like this, there's always an autopsy automatically done. They indicated there was uh, gross amounts of stippling. Now, stippling only occurs when you fire a gun six inches or less distance because it's the unused powder that's still burning that comes out of the end of the barrel behind the projectile and hits the skin and leaves little burn marks. He had those marks on his temple and artery areas by his shoulders and head after he had sustained wounds that would have made him completely inoperable. He could not have fought back. He would have basically been laying there gurgling in blood at the most. And someone walked up that close to range and shot him more times. So close that it left burn marks, stippling it's called. Um, the forensics expert also indicated that uh, based on the angles and the order of fire and the wounds, because you know every wound can be sequenced even in a dead body due to the damage and the age of the blood and the tissue and the trauma, you can even get an order that the rounds hit the body. Um, there were shots from above, which indicates someone was even up on his front porch shooting downward at him because the angle would have been impossible to acquire. Um, that occurred less than, oh, eight feet from the front door. In fact, the little teeny bit of concrete walking up the stoop uh, was right next to his head. That's how close he was where he laid uh, and all the blood was and whatnot. Um, so, uh, they finally, after all this is done, oh, and let me tell you again how pre-planned it was, they had in advance already notified the local ambulance service not to run sirens or lights through town if they got a call that evening because they didn't want to disrupt the community. Wow. <clears throat> okay, really so... All this occurred. Now, Bill made the all this occurred. Now, Bill made the indication I'm going to involve the law. He was following, don't you think, law-abiding citizen protocol? If you just don't know somebody and there's some pickup full of rowdy people.